Greetings, everyone, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly and the Federal Brooklyn Appeal and Federal Chicago Trial. Now, as of August 23rd, 2022, which is today, we are in the second week of trial. There is a moment that reminds us of the trial of 2000. And two, if you read the same transcripts, they're just reviving everything that was already put on the docket as of 2008. So, I mean, the same stories are going on. They've went to the Bahamas. Some names have changed. Uh, uh, people are Jane, Susan, and Barry or Barthamy. I don't know. I forget. So... When the trial was active, they had um, a part on the trial, according to CBS, as watching the pornography tapes, okay? So that's where I wish to take my research today. I want to share, number one, that the ultimate goal of R. Kelly Appeal TV, the ultimate goal of R. Kelly Appeal TV is to make aware how the processes by which technology systems are trying to convict Mr. Kelly. I want it to be stated for the record here at R. Kelly Appeal TV that child pornography is a crime and should be punished. The child pornography charges more than it is the obstruction. But I want to share with you to be stated on the record here at R. Kelly Appeal TV that child pornography is a crime and it should be punished. And it is under the federal law that we must truly protect our children and our youth until they are of legal consenting age. The information you're going to hear today was also disclosed in trial on yesterday and will be presented again today. The goal also is to uphold justice and justice alone. We are in no way approving that anyone using media to exploit a child is something that we um, that we say is okay. It's not. It's totally wrong. But yet there is no federal legislation on the books in place as of yet that is currently being reviewed on the major Supreme Court cases regarding cyber exploitation. Child Protection and Social Predator Punishment Act of 1998 has specifically addressed the issues of online victimization and of children. Let's remember that ignorance is not a defense in the court of law. We're going to listen to two clips that I want to share today along with the journal entry, and it is going to tie in what is actually being said in the logistic transcripts of the federal Chicago trial and why it's even there, okay? We are requesting that you also provide at the end of the clip any information that you can input about what we are speaking of today. We're going to give you 10 minutes. Even if we run over time, you will still be able to type in the chat so that your information can be connected to the live broadcast. Okay, so here we go. This is the first thing I want you to hear. It's coming from a law firm. And I do believe in being aware through accredited information. So I'm taking it through the law firm and um, the Supreme Court areas for us to gather this information. So let's listen to this one clip. Child porn essentially is photographs on your phone, on your computer, or any kind of media that you have that is depicts a child under the age of 18. 
And what has happened, what we've seen happen, is people may download from Torrent or other large file sharing services lots of pictures. And there may be some pictures on there that actually have a little marker in them that alerts the government that you've downloaded them. And then if you share those files, you have then distributed those files to someone else. This is a very serious crime, both federally and here in the state. There is a mandatory prison sentence if you are convicted of this. And just possessing it is enough for the state to come after you. So if someone wants to ask you about whether you have something on your computer or wants to see your computer, you need to tell them you need to speak to a lawyer and that they need to have a warrant to get any of your personal property. And of course, the best practice is not to have that on their computer. But as we all know, we don't often know what files we have on our computer. Everyone's gotten a computer virus before that they didn't know was there. Now, a computer virus can download information that has in its web coding remnants of child pornography. So we must be very mindful of what we download. We got to make sure that there's trusted sites. Um, Adobe, um, McAfee are, you know, protecting, you know, sites for any type of viruses and they, they go to check them for you. So that's something that you should safeguard your computers from. Also using passwords that only you know. Um, even if you are sharing, you know, computers with children, we must be aware of what our children are doing online, even all the way down to the video games that they download. So that's very vital. This is something that is going on in Robert's situation, except for it's not online. This was old school that they're talking about with Jane and, you know, everyone. Um, but the obstruction part is what he is now being criminalized for. But on the same instance, we also want to make aware how child pornography is looked at in federal and state law. Now, there is another clip that I want to share. It's a couple minute clip that I think is also highly important for us to discuss and just to know for our own safeguarding measures, because Robert was getting ready to go on to the platform of technology, see, and, you know, ignorance again is not a defense. So this is what he should have known before, you know anything transpired even on a VHS level. But let's listen to what a person should do um, if they're dealing with someone who has been charged with child pornography. This is part of what the courts revealed yesterday. Congress has repeatedly increased the sentences for the possession, distribution, and production of child pornography. Possession of one image depicting child pornography carries a mandatory minimum five-year prison sentence. Section 2G2.2 of the United States Sentencing Guidelines outlines the various ways in which that sentence may be enhanced. Often, child pornography investigations involve internet communications with federal agents working undercover. These cases involve complicated computer forensic, search and seizure, and sentencing guideline interpretation issues. These cases require experienced counsel to aggressively litigate these and other issues that often arise. The FBI has increased its focus on federal charges of enticement of minors on the internet. Most cases involve an undercover agent communicating with someone about a child that doesn't actually exist. 18 United States Code Section 2422B carries a mandatory 10-year prison sentence for anyone who uses the mail or any facility or means of interstate or foreign commerce or within the special maritime and territorial jurisdiction of the United States who knowingly persuades, induces, entices, or coerces any individual who has not attained the age of 18 years to engage in prostitution or any sexual activity for which any person can be charged with a criminal offense or attempts to do so. Now, 
most of the time the undercover agent is pretending to be someone who has access to a minor, not the actual minor. These are known as, quote, intermediary cases, and different federal courts are split on what type of access the undercover agent can claim to the fictitious child, as well as what type of things can be said to the agent to constitute, quote, enticement. These are complex issues that require an attorney who has experience with these types of cases. Section 2A3.1B6B of the Sentencing Guidelines enhance potential sentences for child enticement charges and other sexual offenses for the, quote, use of a computer. This is a technical term that applies if a computer or interactive computer service was used to, one, persuade, induce, entice, or coerce a minor to engage in prohibited sexual conduct, or two, facilitate transportation or travel by a minor or a participant to engage in prohibited sexual conduct. It's important to have an attorney experience at litigating these types of issues. Subsection B6B is intended to apply only to the use of a computer or an interactive computer service to communicate directly with a minor or with a person who exercises custody, care, or supervisory control of the minor. If you are the target of a child pornography investigation, it's important to involve an experienced, aggressive attorney as early as possible in the process. An attorney. And this comes from attorney David Benowitz, a criminal um a criminal defense attorney and basically he's just getting us prepared for the new laws if you go back to the beginning portions of r kelly appeal tv i was letting you know then that there were going to be laws that were going to be on the books new for for technology and this is what it is so when he talked about the enticement of a minor and um, the obstruction of it, that's where they're taking the information. So we must be mindful of what we have on our computers, what we're looking at. You, you know, it's just so different than just going to a adult toy bookstore and picking a, a pornography book of adults in bright colors, you know, to attract our um, sexual gratification is much different than what we have today. We don't even know if we click on a website and we don't know what's behind that website. If we click on that, it could be a phishing website that already holds child pornography. So that's something that should be very, very critical and put on, put in the mind for us to re remember. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. This is for informational purpose on, purposes only. I do not believe in child pornography. I do not believe it should exist. And anyone that is involved in it should be punished. Okay, so, you know, to the um, stipulations of what the law states. And so the that part of it, you know, may be involved in it with the R. Kelly um, trial at this moment because of the fact that if he does not say that's not him on the tape, then everyone's going to assume that Jane is telling the truth and that her mother is telling the truth and that her father is telling the truth and everybody went on vacation to obstruct. So then that would make him the enterprise that created the distraction. So again, I don't know how it's going to go down. I don't know what is going to take place. I just feel the injustice of how the system is doing, Robert, based upon the way that the court system is running is why I am incorporating R. Kelly Appeal TV into this channel. Now, I do not believe that is him on the tape. But it would have to take him to come out and literally say, it's not me. They're lying. Now, there is an emotional position here that Robert has begun to take. He's begun to feel the energy of what is really taking place based on the people who are in his face, specifically saying to him, whatever they're saying. He is in there with the demons. He is fighting the demonic principality. OK, so I just say my heart goes out. I wish him the best. And I'm going to do a reading that I journaled yesterday. 
for today. And the title is, Don't Let This Lesson Pass Without Learning. Okay? Don't let this lesson pass without learning. And this goes to all of us, to Kelly Nation supporters, to Robert Sylvester Kelly, to the victims and the witnesses, to the children that are going to listen to this and not know what to do. This is what you do. You report. You report, report, report to anybody. Do not allow decades to go forward and live with whatever you're living with in order for whatever your benefits are to continue to go through it and then decide, you know, when you're 90 years old to, you know, let the world know that you were abused. Please don't do that. And um, in this Child Protection Act, they need to incorporate that as well. You know, um, how much can a child truly be believed when it comes down to something that happened 20, 30 years later? All right. So don't let this lesson pass without learning. Dear Robert, I know your heart is heavy today. I know all your good has been evilly spoken of, you know, taking care of people that didn't even understand that that was what you were doing. I know all your good may have been evilly spoken of. Many people are on looking at your trials as in, I told you so. I knew he was doing wrong. I heard about it. You know, when the seeds get planted in our minds, we do have that ability to not be able to decipher or or separate what was planted and what we actually believe. So Robert, just know that all of your so-called loved ones and people who were envious of you and what you possessed are here at your day of judgment. Not all of them. You do have some angels in that room. You have angels and you have demons, Robert. And they're all in a room together. You have to be able to know the difference. Watching your book of life become written by someone who only wanted to record the negative things that you have done. Not the good things the negative things. They're here for your day of judgment. So as your book of life is being written, excluding you, your hard work, and all you sacrificed over your life, these people are only seeing bits and pieces of the picture being formed. And, and so are you, Robert. You're seeing who was real. Yes, those who may not know it, they may not even think you're awake, but stay awake, stay woke. Stay woke. Yes, those who may not know it, all may have this or that to say about you, but no one even matters. Don't let this lesson pass without learning, Robert. People who you have employed, took on vacation, purchased big market ticket items for, may be testifying against you and saying some things you know are not true and they know are not true. This is to make you question your own mental status. Yeah. I mean, they want to use the IQ level as a strength measure of how much your emotions and mind can take. You, They'll have you thinking, did this really happen? Was I really doing this stuff? Be not concerned on that level because we are resilient people. I had a conversation with the person to, uh, earlier today. 
that stated, if we can forgive the greatest travesty of history that a person could ever do to a culture, we can forgive ourselves for being naive. Don't let this lesson pass without your learning, Robert. And anyone and everyone who is listening to this podcast, please recognize that this is all a test of our ultimate belief in karma. Even if we go upon the stand based upon guilt or innocence within our own hearts, will we be judged? So I don't need to tell you that there are forensic examiners in the courtroom that are looking at how many trips people took within a certain time period. I don't need to be in the courtroom to express to you that there are systems inter- um, on the internet right now that track everything we do. This is why web, web coding and designing is so extremely important. Because when you learn the dynamic, intricate workings of the back drop of the computer, you'll see no one can ever own the internet and no one can ever break the internet. So when you see that and you see these apps coming forward and they're transitional, that is just telling you that the coding and designing of the back frame of the original product is just using bits and pieces to plug in apps that are gonna get us from A to B because we do need to grow in technology in America. But you have people who can, you know, maneuver Cash App, you know, programs and make Cash App look real when it's fake, fake news. You can have people who put up a website that looks actually legitimate, JCPenney, Macy's, but behind it, it could be something altogether different. So always, always check your credentials on your Google taskbar and make sure that that link is legitimate. So that's what, that's where I want to take the trial information from instead of going all the way back to 2008 and coming back up with all the lies that they're telling in the courtroom right now. Many of us will be anxiety driven if we were to follow all that stuff. But what I want to do here is just put it into layman terms, break it down to what is really truly happening. Remember, I told you to pay attention, pay attention to what is going on as this case proceeds. And these dates are very important. Universally, numbers are extremely important. That's the reason why the biggest system in America is all about financial gain and it has to do with numbers. The numeric value is a very powerful place in America. And that's the lottery system. It's even tied to the educational system. So you know that when you deal with numbers, there is something significant and powerful in them. And if you know how to read numbers, like you could read a transcript or a book or a, 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 um, a Bible, you can learn to use energy the way that others do. So that's a whole nother topic, but I want to now give you 10 minutes. It's we're at, um, let me see, 23 minutes right now. So I'm going to give you 33 minutes and I would like you to share your views of what you heard on this podcast. Was it worth it? The information? Did you understand it? Do we need to go deeper? Do we have any questions? Do you want to send a shout out to Robert? Do you want to express just what you're learning? Because don't let this lesson pass without learning something. 
you're on the channel, you're already listening. So what are you going to take from it? What are you going to put into your existence? What are you going to put into your life and forward focus that energy? Not just on Robert. No, this is, we're all in this. We're all human. We're all Robert. Some of us are just in, in another place and space and time. Okay. But we all have the potential energy to be Robert. And that's why it's important to know what the rules, the laws, the logistics of why everything is the way it is today. Don't let this lesson pass without learning something. Thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. I love to have the quiet time where it's just peace, where you can really and truly jot your information down and think clearly about what it is you want the world to know in relation to connecting with Robert Sylvester Kelly. Why are you connected to him? How is he empowering you? And is this something that, you know, we are just sitting there on the sidelines waiting for the judgment to be drawn down. Because if that's the case, then that's very sad. Very sad. So I thank you. And now starts the 10 minute um, disquiet time to reflect and to write something important in the live chat. Thank you. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.